Bob. This is Jay. We are Alpha Quadrant 6, a science fiction review show. This episode is part two in our four-part series on the elements of great science fiction and fantasy. The first episode, we talked about world building. And in this episode, we're going to talk about character development. Character development is one of the, I think, you know, obviously the most important parts of any good story. If you don't have good characters that you care about that are interesting, mm -hmm. then... It doesn't matter what happens. You don't feel anything. You don't feel anything. You yeah, the, the saying goes, bad plot can be saved by great characters, but the, but the, but bad plot, <laughs> no wait. But yeah, bad, bad characters can't be saved by a good plot. No, but a, but a great plot, I know the end now, the great, a great plot cannot be saved if you have horrible character right. development. Yeah. So, so have you ever watched a movie? Not symmetrical. <laughs> you're, you're watching right. the movie <laughs> and you're in about three minutes and something doesn't feel right. Yeah. Something's off. Something's off. I can give you a perfect example uh, the, with The Last Airbender, oh the movie. My God, don't get me started. I, I, I couldn't you, believe you how, soon, watch that? how soon. I, I mean, I was 30 seconds into the movie and I'm like, oh, it's all wrong. The, it's what is, not working. It's not working at all. Right from the get go, the character development was so epically bad because the special effects were amazing. The setting was amazing. There yeah. were all these things that were there that that you, I should have been appreciating, but the characters were wooden. You, could, you couldn't. I didn't care about anything. And the thing is, the source material was a cartoon that had great characters. I know. <laughs> what the <laughs> hell? They, they, they blew it. They started with great characters. All right. So yeah. what, what are the elements of a good character? And we're not going to give you a writing tutorial, but you know, just in terms of just appreciating a good character, characters need to have a personality, obviously. They need to have a backstory. Um, you need to, and they need, they need to have details. You know, like when you're writing a good character, you need to answer questions that you might not think that you need to answer. Like, what's their favorite food? You know, how do they dress? They should have flaws. Oh yeah, they. Sh what are their quirks? What they, are their flaws? What's important? Yeah. What's their motivation? What are obviously? they scared of? Right. Right. What are their skills? Right. What skills are they? Because that will, all these things could come out. You know, like we have like the Mandalorian hates droids. It's a little detail, that, but there's a history to it. There's a reason why he hates droids, and it comes into the plot. And we, we could think about, oh, he's not going to like that because yeah. it's the droids involved. Exactly. It gives you things to, to grab onto. Here's a great example just recently in Picard. In Picard mm -hmm. se season three, there was the Captain Shaw hated Picard and, and Riker. And, and when I saw that happen, I was like, well, you're disrespecting Picard, yeah, your beef? a yeah. legend. I'm thinking this guy's a douchebag. He really <laughs> he was a but, douchebag. But then a few, yeah, he, he also was a douchebag. Yeah. But to do that, that was the, the initial impression. But then episodes later, it's like he finds out, yeah, he was like a lowly like Lieutenant or something mm -hmm. in, in Wolf 359, and he watched thousands of people die, and he was like- and, In the hands and, of Locutus and, aboard. And, and yes, and yeah. Picard was on a Borg ship as Locutus, so that it makes it all made sense. That was a critical part of his backstory, and yes. one of the best scenes in, so far in the first four episodes. So there's, there's an arc to the character, mm -hmm. and there's also an arc to our understanding of the character, ah, right, right. right? Because not everything, it's a, you don't get an information dump at the beginning. Yeah, it takes time. It's a little mystery, you yeah. know, you discover things over time, and things, I think the one of the best characters that had that simultaneously the characters going through changes and our knowledge of the characters going through changes is it's, the Kingslayer mm -hmm. from the Game oh of Thrones. Oh my God. Right? Yeah. Wonderful you character. You hate his guts. You hate it. You like, go from hating his guts to loving him. Yeah, I was rooting for him, him at the end. You're rooting yes. you know, for him at the end. I mean, and it was the same guy the whole time, but although he did evolve in a good way, you know, he's still the same character and, you, and you're debating his decisions at the end of what's he going to do. And it's really interesting because it's a very compelling character. What more arc, than what anything, arc. more than anything, characters have to be memorable and interesting. Mm -hmm. They can't be flat and boring. And, you know, that's usually characters that they don't know what, they don't know what they're doing. They don't have, you know, they don't have any background or details or anything that to fill them with life. You when know, you're, so they fall flat. When you create a protagonist, yeah. well, you could, this goes for antagonists as well, but like you're basically the person that the story is about. Yeah. Luke Skywalker, for example. Yeah. You have to go back into that character's history and know the world that they're from, you know, no details about them. So, you know, you ever hear like people say the, the story wrote itself? Yeah. I, I, you know, Brian Trent, who we had on the show last, you know, a couple of weeks ago, he and I have talked about this endlessly. We talk about writing stories yeah. and characters. And he says that when he fleshes out a character to this really high level, yeah. really high bar, that when he puts his character in a situation, he knows what the character is going to do. He knows what they're going to do. Right. He knows what you, they're going to yeah, do. Yeah, because they're a character, a real live person. Exactly. You know, virtually speaking. And this, like, so he, th this is an interesting thing to do now. Now, what, go out there and watch your favorite TV show. And then watch her least favorite TV show and compare the two and try to predict 
Like, do I know a character well enough? Is this show giving me enough information about a character where I can predict what they're going to do? Like, I, I was doing yeah. this to myself earlier today. I'm like, would I be able to predict what Luke Skywalker would do? Mm -hmm. You know, take Luke Skywalker from the first three movies, that, that version of Luke. Mm -hmm. Would I be able to predict what he's going to do in a lot of circumstances? And my answer to that is, yeah, I think I could. I think I really could totally. wrap my head around where he so, would go with it. The reason why one of the reasons why Star Wars, you know, the the original trilogy was so popular and and you know, mind blowing was because it it revolved around characters that were all really well written and and very compelling. Um, and you know, I was reading you know one review of the various Star Wars trilogies, and they made a very good observation, which was they said, "Here's an exercise," and, and this tells you like how well the characters are developed. Describe uh, Han Solo. Yeah without using any physical description, right? Don't describe him physically, but just give me a, a sentence about his personality, about, about yeah. what, who he is. Yeah. And you could say he's a lovable rogue or whatever. You can come up with a description about him or Luke Skywalker is the naive, you know, whatever kid. Now, now give me a one line description of Princess Amidala from the first movie. Like there's nothing, there's, there's, there's nobody, there's yeah. no character There's nobody there. there. There's nobody there. Yeah. Like you, you, you could, you would not debate what would they do? I don't know who cares what they would do. You can't <laughs> even think about it because you don't have anything to hang on to. Exactly. So characters need, need a spark of life. And the mm. way you give that to them is you actually write a story about who they are. Yeah. You got to figure out who that character is. This, that, this is all like character building one-on-one. Yeah. Now to, to amp it up a little bit, characters also need to have a couple of very important things. They need to have an inner conflict mm -hmm. and an outer conflict. Yeah. So I'll give you an example. Um, uh, and the outer I, conflict reflects the inner conflict. I'll use I'll use um, Ripley from the movie Aliens, right? One the of the second, best iconic sci-fi characters right. of all time. Second yeah. second movie in the franchise. So she Ripley was gone in, in cryostasis for so long that her daughter aged and died. So she comes back to Earth fifty years later, and her daughter's dead. Mm -hmm. Right. Fast forward, they're sending her back to the planet where the alien was found. And they, they colonized it. And there's a little girl that Ripley develops a relationship with, with Newt, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. Ripley's inner, inner conflict <laughs> is, you know, there's lots of inner conflicts that she's having. But yeah. one of her inner conflicts is she lost her daughter and, she, yeah. and she's totaled from that. And her outer conflict is she has developed a relationship with this little girl. And now she's saving that little girl's life. So she's fighting the aliens to save Newt's life. And it's very obvious what her inner mm -hmm. and outer conflict is. Now, imagine if she didn't have those two things. Yeah. How, how right. good could that story have possibly been if, if we didn't have a reason to understand why Ripley attached herself to that little girl? It makes perfect sense. Now, and they also, did you know, yeah. they cut that scene when you, they, she found out what, what happened to her daughter. They, that was cut in the initial release, which was just so weird because, choice, because it yeah. ruins it, it ruins that, that, Wow, that that's bit of crazy. crazy. I never heard that. that. Yes, I ridiculous. remember seeing it. So whenever we saw it, yeah, I they, add, that they scene. added it back. All right, let's go one level deeper. Go ahead. So we're going to break characters down into protagonists and antagonists. heroes, yep. antagonists, villains, and supporting characters. Right, right, secondary characters. Because let's start with secondary characters. I have a perfect example of a secondary character because they are so important. And it, yeah, it, you, give, you, give, you can give it a second. I just want to say that I always know I'm watching a well-written show when there's a secondary character who means really nothing to the whole story, but they are interesting as hell. And you love yeah. them instantly. Yep. Right? Yeah. Like in seconds, like there, there's a person with a whole life behind that stupid secondary character who's just filling this one little role Whatever it is, but secondary they, characters though help reveal the the protagonist well, and yes, the antagonist. They, they play. They can play a lot of roles. Yeah. You know, they could support the protagonist. They could be sort of their foil. They could be there to point out their problems. You know, they could create problems for the for the. Yeah, like Malfoy is a foil to Harry Potter, right? Yeah. You know, and, and but well, he's that, more he's more of a villain though. In, kinda, he's not the real villain. You know, he, he's, well, he's with he's at the lower lower. Here. He's not really. All right, I'll give you a perfect one. This yeah. is my favorite, one of my favorite of all time. Secondary? You might not agree with me right away, but let yeah. me explain. Admiral Piet, mm -hmm. Star Wars, right? Think about it. We learn a lot about Darth Vader by this guy having to interact yes. with Darth Vader. So we're yeah. seeing Darth Vader through his <laughs> eyes. <laughs> right. yes. We feel his fear when, when he has to go tell Darth Vader that they lost this. You remember when yes. Darth Vader was in that thing and his seat turns around, his helmet goes back mm -hmm. on, and that guy has to be the schmuck that tells him yep. Yep. that we can't find the ship right. or they're lost in the yeah. asteroid field. Like That relationship tells us a lot, and that character exactly. was essential to he, showcasing that relationship. We watched that character watch Darth Vader kill the guy that was 
Yeah, his, you know the other admiral that he took his position. Yeah, his, yeah, his, his former right? boss, right? Like all Apology that, accepted, Captain Nita. We yeah. don't know anything <laughs> about Admiral Piat. We don't know anything about him other than he has to interact with Darth mm -hmm. Vader. And in those little interactions, we learn so much about Darth Vader. That's all mm -hmm. that really matters. It doesn't, right. it doesn't yeah. really yeah. matter yeah. about him. Or, or all right, I'll give you another one that I'm sure you guys would agree with. This is a character that appeared. It was a short scene, and it was so compelling that he ex it exploded into. Another movie or Another something? Another series, Boba Fett. Boba Fett. Oh yeah, that yeah. one goofy scene. Yeah. With all the with all the bounty hunters, and he was he stood out. He stood out. Him and the robot was it was it eighty eight? Eighty eight. Yeah. yeah. Um, and look what ha look what ha look where Boba Fett and now the Mandalorian went because of that one. He was a secondary character. We didn't have to ever see Boba him again. Fett is a great, fantastic secondary character because he you he gives the impression of a whole history. You want to know? A whole you window into know. a part of the world. Now I will argue that yeah. we. One of the first of all, he looks really cool. Yeah, that's that's, that's huge. Character that's huge. design did yeah. so much for this. But in that that's... moment, when Darth Vader points to him and says, "No disintegrations," yes, all of a sudden, was... all of a sudden, he's a badass. He's a badass. He's yes. a badass. Right. And he's like, okay, whatever. All right. But here's, <laughs> and again, that's really, this is Star Wars because the you know like the, the, the different trilogies were so different. It's, it's such a good internal comparison. So you had right. the bounty hunters from you know, right. the Empire Strikes Back, who were all like, each one is more fascinating than the other, but you yep. know, with the pinnacle of Boba Fett. Then you go fast forward to Kylo Ren, mm -hmm. right? Do you remember that Kylo Ren had a crew? Yeah. Remember that? The, something, of, right? So yeah. they, yeah, the Knights of Ren or yeah, whatever. whatever. And yeah, yeah. They didn't, right? we didn't learn anything about that. They were nothing. Yeah, they were, they were nothing. completely absentee secondary characters. That was an opportunity for so much just uh, layering yeah. and yeah. intrigue and interest. Like we should have looked at one, at least, you know, that those characters go, that guy's got an interesting history and there should have been looks and things like, you know, it should have been totally yeah. engrossing. Well, they, they, and they were nothing. They were worse than red shirts. They, they were, were worse, red, than, they're worse than red shirts. They did it very well in Rogue One. Yeah. You know, the people that, that, you know, she mm. was hanging out with, like that yeah. crew that went, you know, I, I can't remember the names and all that stuff, but you look at them and they're iconic. You remember them. Yeah. You know what they look like. They have little personalities going on. And the robot? To, yeah. Hello. Exactly. So secondary characters, I think, are a massive color yeah. to the story. Right. And they, they give us the opportunity to reveal things about our protagonists and our antagonists. Yeah, they're, they're incredibly useful. It, they, it's very tempting to treat them as window dressing and sort of underwrite them, but that's a mistake. And I can always tell lazy writing yep. when that happens. And when when I could tell that the writers invested a lot of thought into a into a very brief secondary character, I know that they that they're invested in. And, yeah. You know. All right. So let's talk about heroes. What makes a good hero? And let's we're going to talk about our favorite heroes of all time mm -hmm. from all science fiction. So you know. Pulling off the elements we've already said, obviously there has to be something heroic about a hero, though they can be the reluctant hero. That's a very common theme, the reluctant hero. Um, there's the wait, there's the you know the Boy Scout hero again, the reluctant hero, the anti-hero. You know, mm -hmm. he's kind of a bad guy, but you know he's in. Like, and I would argue, for example, that you know the Mandalorian's kind of an anti-hero. He starts out as a bounty hunter. And Joel from The Last of Us is sort of an anti-hero. He's kind yeah. of doesn't care. He's just sort of a, a survivalist. Um, but we, you know, they're they're still heroes. Even Tony Soprano was an anti-hero. Mm -hmm. Definitely, still, he's he still on his side. Um, so, uh, but but then there's hero heroes. You know that are they're just Luke Skywalker. Yeah, Luke Skywalker. They're the good guys. They're on. They're on the. They're, we're rooting for them. We want them to defeat the devil, the, the villains. Um, but a an interesting hero, right, has flaws. Mm -hmm. They have demons of their own. Um, they have quirks. They have. They may have a checkered past there's something about them that makes them flawed mm -hmm. and it's those flaws that make them memorable and endearing um sherlock holmes is a is sherlock a holmes opium was, addict yep, is addicted and an asshole yep you know <clears throat> um yeah that's yeah sherlock holmes is uh, iconic you know for a the flawed hero yep. you know and that that template uh, he became the template for so many other so many other characters yeah, totally you know? and, when, right. and when he was written i mean it was it was he wasn't, you know, he wasn't saying, oh, look at this awesome, super smart guy. He was like making f like fun of that whole yeah, attitude, I, wasn't I, he? I mean, yeah, the Arthur Conan Doyle didn't like Sherlock Holmes, didn't like the character. He he didn't think that, and he was surprised that he became so popular. Like, guys, this 
he's an asshole. You're like, you get that, right? <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, but, but you wrote him so well that he's lovable. Yeah. loved him. He, he became iconic. Yeah, right, right. That's why like, he, Doyle killed him off because he was sick of him. And then the fans made him yes. bring him back. <laughs> You know, made retcon, you know, he wasn't whatever. But that's a great example of that. All right, yeah. let's talk about our favorite heroes of all time. Does anybody want to go first? Well, I'm going to just throw out, I was going through the list, and one one that hit me was interesting. Let me, Terminator. Yeah. All right, now. Wait, wait, but uh, the who? second movie. Who? Just, Arnold Schwarzenegger is a Terminator in, in, the, in, multiple, in the multiple movies. I love that, him, because he, he's a villain first, then he's a hero, and then there's also the whole duality of the you know, the, the flesh human on top and the robot evil robot mm-hmm. underneath. To me, that all that meshes together into an awesome character. Sure, I mean he wasn't, you know, he wasn't. It, the acting wasn't great. Maybe the writing wasn't stellar either. But the character itself, of course, you know, it's robots, science fiction. Yeah. I love I love robots. I own like a hundred of them, two hundred of them. And um, so I think he's a fantastic character because he embodies like the, the spectrum, the, uh, so much of no, the spectrum. No, I agree. It was brilliant to turn an iconic villain into a hero mm-hmm. that we then is yes. fighting on our side. And like all of the things, because we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, but villains are supposed to be more powerful than the hero, right? Yeah, usually. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. And so now all the things that made us afraid of him like yeah but now he's our guy yes yeah. now he's yeah. on our side yeah. it was brilliant actually yeah. it was brilliant and so it didn't it kind of took care yeah. of the other issues. are we talking just sci-fi or basically any movie? any speculative yeah. fiction anything anything well i mean i think rick from casablanca is, yeah. is one of my he's a kind of an anti-hero in a way but he ends up the evolution of that character ends up being pretty extraordinary um i just absolutely love how broken he is i mean talk about a well-written mm-hmm. character oh my god his history is so is so complicated yeah. and interesting um, so yeah, I mean, I just absolutely mm-hmm. adore that movie and I love that character so much. I mean, his, he's so heartbroken. I, you feel every single thing that's going on in, in his heart when I watch that movie. Yeah. And then I have to, I have to give a shout out to Conan. Mm-hmm. I think, I think that character is so interesting. The way that Arnold played him in the movie was fantastic. And I think that, you know, he's also, <laughs> he's also a complicated character that has a really interesting background. You know, we get mm-hmm. to see his, what happened to him. Why did he become this character? We see him, his childhood. Right, right, and we, and we know why he is is this character, and he and he has a lot of you know he has a a, a lot of things going on. He's not stupid at all. He's a very intelligent mm-hmm. character. Mm-hmm. How about you, uh, the Doctor? Oh yeah, uh-huh, uh, nice. Doctor Who. Yeah, I mean, think of yeah. I mean, it's an iconic character. I know we're trying to think a little bit outside the box on this, but I'm just going to have to give a shout out to the Doctor. So think about a character that is so well developed that they could literally be twelve different people. And still be the same character. Yeah. Right. Think about that. Yeah, that's great. That's a, it's it, the when the doctor goes through his regeneration, he becomes a different person. He's literally played by a different actor. His personality evolves. Mm-hmm. You know, his likes and dislikes evolve a little bit, but there's still a core that is the doctor, and that core is so strong that it shines through all of yeah. these multiple iterations. And that core is also awesome. It's iconic. It's a character that successfully navigates seemingly impossible situations through pure strength of uh, intelligence and optimism, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and that uh, you can't underestimate the value of that optimism, right? Optimism, I agree. It shines through, you know, and it's always like that guiding light. It's like, yeah, it's going to work out. I'm going to, don't worry. I got a plan. You know, it, it, it'll, it'll be fine, even though he doesn't have any weapons and, you know, he's dealing with, you know, going against murderous armies of aliens. doesn't matter. He figures Paralyzed. something out. You know? yep. I mean, yeah, he goes up against thousands of Daleks and he's, he, he makes it all work out in the end. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, and I'm always anxious to see that next iteration of him because it's like another right. version of the Doctor. You know, it's, it, it's unique in that, in that respect. And sure. of course, it's been... 60 years, 70 years, you know, you, you're, you don't, a character doesn't have that kind of staying power uh, unless there's something there's special, something special yeah. going on. All right. There. All right. Let's click over now to, uh, to villains or anti-heroes. I mean, or uh, pro antagonists, right? Yeah. Villains. So the villains are um, there's, there's two kinds of villains. Mm-hmm. There's a well-written villain and there's a bad villain. A badly written villain. <laughs> We've seen many examples of this idea. Like we, we call it a mustache twisting villain because they're one note. 
They're, they're, they're bad for, for being bad, they're, right? Yeah, they're evil for the sake of being evil. But what they're you Dr. want, evil. you want a, 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 a bad guy who you can almost relate to. Mm -hmm. it, but I got to throw this out there right from the get-go. The, what we know about, about Darth Vader in movie four, which is the first Star Wars movie, mm -hmm. we, we don't even know his motivations. The character is so awesome. He's, he was the best villain in that movie. And, and, and I, who can even compete? You know, like, there's very few characters I, I, I think could even get up to the height that Darth Vader yeah. was able to achieve. And he, we didn't really know much about him and we didn't really know his motivations. No, we wanted to know more We about did, him. of course we did. He was, yeah. we, we, we desperately wanted to learn more about so him. So what makes a good villain, uh, as I, what I already alluded to, villains, you know, first of all, they need to have a motivation. They need to have a morality, their own morality. They have it's, to have an inner code that there, makes yeah, sense. Yeah, there needs to be an inner code. It could be warped. It could be a tad askew, um, but it's there. They're not just evil for evil's sake or because they're psychopaths or whatever. That's more, if you're a psychopath, you're not really a villain. You're a monster. Yeah, that's, nice that's true. Um, you're, if you're, villains need to be, have something that, that motivates them and, and makes them They need them a do modus operandi. They, they, had, they, they yes. can't just get up in the morning and Who can I kill today? want to do yeah. bad things. Yeah. They, they have to have a, like a mission. They have to have something that they're fighting for that they yeah. believe in. That, that, that you know, Bob brought up Thanos, and Thanos is like the perfect example of this. It is. You can relate to what, in a way, Thanos was yeah. thinking he was doing the universe. The best villains solid. think they're heroes. Yeah, he totally. thought he, thought he Absolutely. was doing the right thing, and and he, he really and he almost pulled you over to his side a couple of times. You're like, you 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 think about it. Yeah, you, you, you know, know, he makes you, you question think it about for a second. It. Yes, yeah. and if you could just do that, that's all that. That's a good villain right there. Yeah. So, but I agree. I mean, I looked at uh, you know dozens of lists of the best characters in sci-fi of all time, and you know, hero, villain, whatever, Darth Vader's near the top of er almost yeah. every list because it is so iconic. So villains also should be more powerful than the heroes, right? The villain yeah. is the hill that the hero has to climb, right? Right. The hero uh -huh. can't just go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the villain out of the gate because the villain's more powerful than they are, right? I mean, Luke Skywalker versus Darth Vader for in movie one. Forget, they, it. forget about forget it, about right? It. It, should be, it should seem insurmountable. That's why the hero has to develop their skills you know, develop their alliances and marshal their friends or whatever it is they got to do, figure out the weakness, go get the special thing. Well, this is where the, hero the, the concept That's of the, the heroic question. journey, yeah. Yeah. you know, this heroic journey and, and uh, Lucas definitely, he talked to the person the who wrote journey. the book. Yeah. Um, yeah. James Campbell, like th that whole idea plays in so perfectly with this con this kind of storytelling because the hero has to go on multiple adventures yeah. and almost has to like, un you know, there's all these things that could that could happen in the heroic journey. But when you think about, you, it's such a, co a good thing to say, Steve, think about Luke in that very first movie. Yeah. There is absolutely no way that he can stand toe to toe with Darth Vader. He has to go on a three movie arc. Yeah to be able to get to the point where he could even be in the same room with the guy. Yeah. That's how more powerful Darth Vader, Darth Vader is profoundly more powerful than the mm -hmm. strongest version of Luke ever, ever. Right. Yeah. And then he had to psych him out at yeah, the end yeah. to really beat him. That's right. Um, yeah, yeah, it was, he, it was he, he beat he him emotionally. Sun, yeah, he beat him emotionally. He had to pull the yeah. sun card yeah. on him. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but there's so many. My, so I knew one of us would be talking about Darth Vader. We had to. I'm going to say for my favorite villain, a, a, um, one that's a little bit unusual, Gaius Baltar from. I dig that. I mean, totally. I totally get yeah. it. I totally get yeah. it. Uh, from Battlestar, from the reboot, from the reboot of Battlestar Galactica. Now the original guy is Baltar. He was a mustache. Was a mustache twisting, <laughs> twisting yeah. evil <laughs> totally. for evil's sake, totally one dimensional, Made flat, no sense. cardboard villain. Yep. And then they they completely changed that character into this All wonderfully right. flawed and complex genius scientist. You know, you know, it's, you know, technologist, but was had every character flaw you could imagine and he goes through this incredible arc across the season he becomes you know first he sells out his whole race kind of That's inadvertently off. but you know <laughs> right. he did it and then he's hallucinating you know this sexy chick and then mm -hmm. he's you know he becomes president of the of the the the, 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 the you know, ragtag remnant of the humanity and like it's like what's he going to do next you know and all the whole time it's like he's you, you know, his motivations are so complicated and flawed and twisted, but, you know, he's really likable and compelling. Yeah, I loved watching whole, him. I mean, you know, yeah. when you think about him as a villain um, and pick any James Bond bad mm -hmm. guy, right? 
James Bond villains are are cardboard cut out. Yeah. They're cookie cutter bad guys. Like they have the lair and they have a weird thing on the, you know, Got something's the wrong cat with their, in the lap, you know, yeah. You're right. But when you compare that to Baltar, like Baltar, you actually want to see him on camera. Like you yeah. really don't want to see the Bond villains that much. They're not interesting. They just they just look they're cool. A foil. They're, they're a foil. A, yeah. There's nothing there. But with Baltar, you're totally right, Steve. Yeah. He, that character had real depth where you actually want to hear what he say. He was intriguing. He was yeah. he he sometimes it's make compelling. you think he does make you think he's the good guy sometimes. Yeah. Right. He, even after we've seen him do atrocities, you're like, oh yeah, I remember like a few times during that show where I'm like, I think I agree with him right now, <laughs> you know? Right, right, right. You have anybody you want to throw in to the mix? Um Terminator covered both, I think. Uh, yeah. Um, so in terms of a villain and Thanos, for me it would it would have been Thanos. Yeah, we yeah, Thanos. covered that as well. He is the apex. Right. I mean, not only was he just so well acted and so interesting and compelling, but also there's also the little tidbit that he's probably the most powerful villain Ever. of all time. Yeah, he, he was controlled yeah. reality Once he got the in gauntlet, time. Yeah, yeah, with the gauntlet, forget but it. Even before he had all. So the I mean, talk about a hill. Talk about a hill. That was Mount Everest. You had to climb to get over that, and you know when they failed. They did. They failed. Yeah. Well, they initially, initially failed. They did. They had to time travel to yeah. fix it. So yeah, it was a big failure. Right. There are so many other characters I think that we that we should mention that that represent aspects of great character building. We have to mention. Spock, right? Spock is an absolutely iconic character and what made him. So in this also is a Spock is a uniquely science fiction character because mm -hmm. he's not human. He is an alien. And that that introduces another element to the character. How does their their alien species, like whatever they are, how does that contribute to their character development. Exactly. That's part of who they are. Yeah. And that then in science fiction, you get to explore a, an entirely different layer. And also for like, for villains being alien or being not human, and there's different ways you could be not human can give them that twisted morality mm -hmm. that makes them a villain. I think the best example, and somebody did bring it up in the chat is agent Smith from yeah. the matrix. Yeah, right. Agent Smith example. is a wonderful villain, wonderful Fantastic. villain. And you know, because he's not human. Why would he care what happens to humans? He doesn't like the way we smell. Yeah, we stink. It's the smell. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so that, that, and that's a great yeah. scene where you realize, wow, he really hates humans. Yes. He really hates us. And that, you know, why wouldn't he? You know, he's, he's a program and we're just, you know, we're infiltrating his world if you think about it. You know, that is, is a fantastic villain. Yeah. All right. right. I got to throw one more out. Babylon 5, Jakar. Jakar. Yeah, he was a Jakar. punk. He was a punk villain. Great arc. He Great was arc. taught one of the best arcs, I would argue. Yeah. At the end of that, at the end of that series, you love him to death. Mm. He's fantastic. I think how fascinating that is. He oh went from God, he, he went was, from a character a villain. He was legitimately a villain yeah. and a bad yeah, he's a bad guy. A guy that you don't like. And then he turned into a hero. Uh, yes. How cool uh, is yeah, that? In, from, and many, from many angles, he was a the hero. The Centaurin, what was his name? He started out as a hero yeah, and turned he, into a villain. That's right. They kind of yeah. swapped places. Right. That was really interesting. And, and neither of them are human. Of course, they have their own history with each other. And again, that brings in that gray zone of, yeah, a lot of it is subjective and it depends on where you're coming from. And it is, you know... Uh, you know how everyone's the hero of their own of their own movie, and sometimes it's very sectarian. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, and that the thing that science fiction is able to do is give us characters that are they are enmeshed in their world, mm -hmm. and their world is not human. Yeah, and it's not from Earth, or maybe it is hum from Earth, but it's not human. Then maybe maybe they're a vampire or a werewolf or whatever. And that gives us a perspective you can't get any other way. Because I mean, we could say, yeah, but because we have a total outside perspective yes. on, like, you know, the, the science fiction. The conflict that science fiction great. is the perfect environment to explore humanity in. Yes, even though there's exactly. aliens and all that stuff. Because I don't know, there's something about it that that cuts to the bone in a lot of, in a lot of right. stories. You know, it just makes right. it more intense. Yeah, Star Trek was all like, like you know social commentary, so mm. so much. Oh you yeah, know? and it, that's what the, that's what the whole. Where thing would is you about. put Kirk in terms of the hero rating? Oh, he's up there. I mean, he growing up watching. Jim Kirk. I mean, he was he was fantastic. The competency porn of Star Trek in general, but mm -hmm. but Captain Kirk was a phenomenal hero. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. he really he had a moral code that you knew you could predict a lot about what Kirk how Kirk would respond totally. to things. Right, you could completely predict what yeah. Kirk yeah. would do. And I uh, interestingly, and I know there's the whole Kirk and Picard debate. I actually like Kirk better than Picard as a captain, although I like Stewart better as an actor. But the I, I did go through my own sort of transformation over time. I obviously loved Kirk when we were younger. Then when you get older, you're like, yeah, Kirk is kind of a jerk. And 
Picard is more of that mature sort of captain. But then, you know, I then evolved back to, yeah, but when you really think about it, you go back and dissect the Kirk character, he was a better captain than Picard. He was following the code, you know, more assiduously, you know, mm -hmm. more courageously and with better, in many cases, outcomes. Yeah, for sure. And that's one of the things I really love about Where No Man Has Gone Before, with that series, where they're, they're getting a little insight, a little behind the scenes, like, what would have happened in this episode if somebody other than oh, Kirk was the captain? You realize you got to you gain, from a completely different perspective, a, a, a greater depth of appreciation for how good a captain right. Kirk really was. You know, the swagger aside, you know, he was you know, almost like the perfect starship captain. Yeah. In yeah. that universe, yeah. he's probably as good as it can get. Yeah. I, I can't wait till AI can generate an, another season. I am so glad you brought I am waiting for that. And yeah. So we'll, they'll, get, they'll oh, take ja <laughs> chat GPT and then they'll take mid journey and they'll talk to those two AIs and say, make me a, another, uh, the, I'll take next generation season. or the, the fourth, fourth season. Yeah. I'll take either track. one of those Star Trek shows. Make me a few more seasons. It's going to happen. Maybe not in our lifetime. All right, guys, if you enjoyed the show. <laughs> wait, wait, I got to throw out one more what? villain. What? One more villain. Another more villain. villain. There's no more. Dracula. Oh. Uh, well, Come me, on. You mean yeah. Dr. Acula. Dr. Acula. <laughs> Dracula. Yeah. Come on. That's, that guy's got legs. That's, that, yeah, Tony, that's a he's fantastic. got legs for a reason. You have to mention yes. because, and again, it's different from so many other villains. Again, he's not human. His motivations are completely, you know, yep. to us, they're... You know, they're, they're murderous, yeah. you know, but he's just, he's not going to have a good meal, you know, mm -hmm. and <laughs> <laughs> hang out. Uh, but you know, again, like, like, like you think about like a, a character, villain or hero, or whatever, who would you want to spend time with? Right. Right. Who would right. you want to sit down and have a meal with? Maybe not Dracula. No, but, yeah. But that, yeah. yeah, but you know, and, and like the, the character is just so suave and compelling, compelling. and awesome. Yep. And it's like, you would almost be fanboying him even when he was killing you. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and literally, that's how va vampires often work. <laughs> Show me your dungeon before you kill me. <laughs> I mean, anyway, I had to throw. I would love to throw. That I agree with you, Stevie. It's a kind of character legit. where you could watch twenty movies about that character, yes. and you still are it, yeah. interested. And right. just think where how ubiquitous Dracula is. Dracula, I mean, all yeah. over, all over the the spectrum. You, there's great examples. One of my favorites is Castlevania. In oh, terms of like great oh, yeah, animation, right? Netflix great is cartoon. Castlevania from a few years ago. I gotta watch that again. You, There's so many good characters oh we haven't talked about. We're just really scratching know, the just, surface. But yeah, how do you, but I think we hit a lot of the highlights of what makes a good yeah. character. We didn't talk about the ones that characters that don't work. There are horrible characters out there too. I, I yeah, how, long, how long do you want the show? I know. I know. Yeah, we, yeah, could, yeah. we could spend a lot of Let's time. Let's do a whole about. show on it. Let's do a whole show. We could. We could do one. Villains the heroes. worst, great, worst characters in science. That's on the list. We'll definitely do it. All right. So if you enjoy this show, guys, go to Alpha Quadrant and number six dot com where you can see our, our all, every single show that we've done, and you can see this show as a podcast. And please do become a patron of this show to help us keep going. We'll see you next week. Yeah.